At the start of this season, Cronulla were labelled as a dark horse for the Premiership. They may have had a rookie coach, which on average only tends to add one extra win compared to the previous season, but they had recruited well alongside retaining players that showed plenty of promise. Nico Hines and Dale Finucane were obviously the banner recruits from Melbourne, and they were also joined by Ken McInnes, who had set out all of last year during ACL in his final year at St. George. And that was also combined with Will Kennedy proving that he really does belong in the NRL through 2021. There were still questions over their side, particularly in the back line, given a lack of depth, but the likes of C.S. Italakai, Matt Cavalu, and Connor Tracy have been able deputies when they've been called upon. Last year was a bit of a weird year for coaching changes, Wayne Bennett stepped down from Souths while Cronulla dismissed John Morris early on in the season and Cronulla still only missed the finals based on their points differential. So the Sharks were coming off a higher base than most clubs do when they dismiss a coach. Still, their early season form has been surprising and they found themselves neatly placed inside the top four. So here's just what's changed for the men from the Shire this year. So after seven rounds last year, Cronulla were towards the bottom of the ladder. They were 13th with just two wins. They conceded 138 points and scored 146. This year, they're sitting in third. They've conceded 112, but scored 173. So they went from 19.7 points conceded per game and 20.8 points scored per game to conceding 16 and scoring 24.7 on average. So they improved by three points defensively and improved by four points offensively, so an overall points improvement of seven points per game. Considering they missed the eight on points differential last year, that's huge, and it wasn't a big miss. They only missed by roughly 30 points. So if you've improved by seven points across the length of a 24-match season, that alone would have put them into the finals. So on the attacking side of the ball, Cronulla are sitting fifth this year for average run meters with 1,641.8 per game. But they actually averaged more metres per game last year with 1,670. But virtually so did everyone. That's probably a reflection of the whole Volandis ball thing. You get tired defences, it's going to be a lot harder to stop an opponent from getting upfield. And their share of possession hasn't changed from year to year. Last year they were at 50.6, this year they're at 50.3. Their completion rate is actually down on last year. So last year they managed a 79% completion rate. This year they're completing at 74%. But they have improved their try scoring by a whole try. They went from 3.6 tries per game to 4.6 tries per game this year. And their defense has gotten a lot better. They averaged 37.9 missed tackles per game last year, and this year it's 30.9. They're engaging the line more when they run, with 18.3 times per game to 19.6 this year. And they're offloading a lot more to 11.4 times this year from 8.5 last year. So all those stats are very interesting, and there's a bunch of numbers that you can look at, but they're showing which outcomes have changed from last year, but we're going to have a little bit of a look at why those outcomes are changing. So first of all, we can look at their personnel. Last year, they played Chad Townsend, Matt Moylan, Sean Johnson, Connor Tracy, Braden Trindle, and Luke Metcalf in the halves across the entire season. Townsend left mid-year, Johnson and Moylan were injured a lot, so you always got the sense that things never really clicked for Cronulla last year, particularly in attack. This year, luckily enough, they've only had to use Hines and Moylan in the halves, which is obviously a big benefit to them if your halves are the same from week to week. So Fitzgibbon's chosen his pairing and he isn't deviating and he hasn't been forced to by injury, which for Matt Moylan is a big thing for him to be able to play seven consecutive matches. So with that continuity, you then get consistency and it's really paid off. When you watch their backline shifts, they're pretty damn exceptional. Mainly we're on the receiving end of some of it, but for the best representation, we can look at their round five match against the Tigers, but I will get to Manly towards the end of this video. So if you want to have a look at that, stick around. So let's go to that Tigers match back in round five. And their second try is a classic short side raid with Matt Moylan at his absolute best. So let's take a quick look at the personnel that each side has got. As you can see there, you got Braley coming out of dummy half for Cronulla. And the big thing here, notice the first marker. That first marker is Oliver Gildart. He's the Tigers' left edge centre. So he's out of position here, leaving Luke Brooks to fill his role. And Luke Brooks, look, he's a very good defender um, in the halves, despite his small size. But he's up against Jesse Ramian, who's one of the best tackle breakers in the game. So he's left to try and cover Ramian. And you've got uh, Matt Moylan there who's quickly counted the numbers and he's worked out that Cronulla have a very simple four on three. Now, plenty of teams can get this four on three. It's choosing the right pass and how you execute. Some go through their hands too early and 
cramp themselves for room and end up over the sideline. Others go to the winger too early, who himself is forced to come back infield. So a lot of this, despite having a good overlap, is going to rely on Matt Moylan and how he executes this play. Now, he's obviously playing this off, off the cuff because you've got Nico Hines on the left edge of the ruck. He's got two forwards set to run decoys for him. They've got Will Kennedy out the back. But it's clear Moylan sees something, he's called it, and Braley has responded. And Braley is an underrated hooker in the competition at the moment. Um, he's very kind of Reed Marnie-like in his ability to kind of play just out of dummy half and bring his, his playmakers and forwards onto the ball. Uh, and so he's a fantastic player for Cronulla, and he's kind of exactly what they need at dummy half. He doesn't need to do too much because of what his halves are doing and what his fullback can do, but when he needs to do something, he does it well. So as I said, you've got Gildart there caught at marker, Brooks at center. So Moylan plays direct, and he attracts Jacob Little. And Little's the hooker, and he's defending on a short side here, which isn't fantastic for him. But he doesn't completely get the Tigers up and completely attacking him in terms of they haven't all sunk in on Moylan, but he holds Little up. He doesn't allow Little to slide out, and he doesn't allow the inside pressure to get to him and play too early. You know, Britton Nakora run on a really hard line here as well, and then obviously you've got Ramian and Katoa outside him. So they found the weakness here, and they're going to exploit it. And as Moylan comes to the line, he draws Brooks up, and he draws a little onto Nakora. They kind of panic. They come in, and that leaves with a very simple two-on-one. Ramian's not going to bomb. He catches the ball, draws Mamalo, passes to Katoa, and Katoa is far too hard to stop from that distance, and he crashes over. So let's move on to uh, Cronulla's third try of the afternoon, round five, which is Katoa's second. And this time, it's a bit more of a structured play. They go into the right edge. From here, so you've got Braley flinging it out to Moylan, who's at first receiver, and you've got Hines looping around the back at second receiver. It's actually interesting that they're doing this with a right side shift. It's not Cronulla's typical option to play. So last year, they scored 30% of their points down the right and 43% down the left. This year, they scored 35% of their tries down the right and 46% down their left. And the remainder of those stats, you know, they've gone through the middle. So we go to the tackle, you've got a settler from Finucane. And then the Tigers have miscounted their numbers on their left edge. They've got six defenders, but Cronulla actually have eight attackers. And you can only see four of them because the rest of them are out of the shot. It's great depth from Cronulla, which is why you can't see all their attackers. It gives themselves plenty of space and time to play. And the Tigers' defense is very passive. It's not up and in there waiting to see what unfolds. And that's the problem, is when you have eight attackers against six defenders, if you're passive, you're going to end up with an overlap because someone is going to make the wrong decision. So the Tigers' defense is passive here. And then you get a nice decoy from, I think it's Royce Hunt. And he holds up Kelma Tuilangi, who's their left edge back rower. You think you've got another crash line. This runs from Britton Nakora. And that effectively gives Cronulla their overlap. So they end up here with uh, so they end up here with effectively a three on two. So Nakora's held up Brooks. So Brooks now has to try and get across. But it's the ball here from Hines, which is really what ends up creating the try. It's He cuts out Will Kennedy, so he throws it in. In front of him, bring Gildard up, who thinks Kennedy's getting the ball. That puts Ramian on the outside of his man. And then again, it's pretty simple. He draws Mamalo, gets the Katoa. And whilst there is cover defense coming across, Katoa is one of the best finishers in the NRL. He's not going to bomb anything from there. And he quite easily ends up crossing for his second of the afternoon. As I mentioned at the start, I am going to have a bit of a look at what happened in round seven. Because, well, Talakai was thereabouts untouchable in the first half. And... When you look at the stats there from Thursday nights, all six of Cronulla's tries came down their left edge, and only one of them didn't involve Talakai. So what's interesting here is Cronulla start this from way, way, way on the right-hand side of the field. There's no deception about where the ball is going or what they're trying to do. And in fact, there's no one really looping around the back here from this play, because as you can see, Will Kennedy's kind of standing almost directly behind Nico Hines. He's not in position to be looping around the back as an extra ball player. What Cronulla actually do is... They use Jaden Braley as the second playmaker, and they use Matt Moylan basically as the fullback looping around the back. And Moylan did play a fair bit of fullback early on in his career, so it's not something he's uh, unfamiliar with doing. So Hines gets the ball here at first receiver. There's not a lot going on here. He's just there to basically shovel the ball on. So it's, the play begins to unfold here with Braley, who shows really good playmaking skills by taking the ball to the line. He attracts the attention of Lachlan Croker, and then you've got this crash line coming from Royce Hunt, who holds up Homale Oakawatu on Manly's right edge. And that then kind of sets the cat amongst the pigeons with Daly Cherry Evans, not sure if he should stay and hang around to try and help out bring down Royce Hunt, or if he's got to try and push out and close down Matt Moylan. 
So Moylan, too, he takes the ball to the line. Again, he holds up Daly Sherry Evans, who is kind of pushed out onto, onto the edge to look at both T. Wilton and Matt Moylan. And it's the line here from Wilton that also holds up Morgan Harper. And he doesn't hold him up that much. I mean, he's kind of ends up a step behind CSF for Talakai. But Talakai is a very mobile fringe at this point in the game. And Harper is having a hell of a time trying to control him. And this ends up looking far too easy for the NRL. Talakai gets the ball. He scoots around Morgan Harper, who shouldn't really be getting beaten like that. And then he throws this nice little dummy, sends Jason Saab for a hot dog, who goes out after Mortalo. And Talakai ends up crossing untouched. And all of this kind of just comes back to Cronulla's slickness in attack and everyone running the correct line, no one running into defenders, causing an obstruction, and um, their ball players not second-guessing themselves and just seeing the weakness and hammering away at it. It, the slight hesitation here from Morgan Harper is essentially what ends up creating the try, but it all comes because Manly's defense gets compressed and then they have to try and fan out against the Cronulla side that is pretty well drilled at this stage of the season. If there's one thing to say about Cronulla's improvement, it's their efficiency in attack. Last year, through injuries, their spine changed far too often, far too quickly, and they often relied on some individual brilliance from somewhere to score points. And when you've got guys like Matt Moylan and Sean Johnson, that's going to win you a fair chunk of games, and it pretty much almost got them into the finals. But to go deeper, to actually make the finals and go deep into September and hopefully get into October for Cronulla, you need to be a lot more consistent in that. And so far this season, they are, apart from kind of their... Uh, showing up against Melbourne, which kind of showed them how much further they've got to go in the game. You know, Melbourne are still one of the premier teams in the competition. They might have changed a lot in the past five years or so, but again, they've still got the defence to beat other supposed heavyweights, and they've got the attack to put on the points when they need to. But for Cronulla, they're very well driven attack this year, and they're more than capable of attacking an opponent with repeatable attacking shapes that allow for minor variations to keep defences guessing. I'm not going to get into it too much, but this play early on in the early on in the half, early on in the match against Manly, eventually leads to T eventually leads to Teague Wilton going over untouched on the left edge. They end up committing so many defenders to get across to cover Talakai. They end up leaving this gigantic hole for Wilton just to stroll through off a short ball from Matt Moylan. It's not too dissimilar to this play. It's a little bit closer to the goal line, but it's simply Cronulla running the same shape over and over, but running it incredibly well and with variations every time so defences can't get settled on who's getting the ball when so they can get up and jam them. And if they can keep this up and their halves stay healthy, they'll be going deep into the finals this year and I still very much back them as a dark horse of premiership favourites. So if you liked this video, please subscribe, give a like, hit the thumbs up, and I will catch you guys next time.